barriers to entry. There's the same amount of regulation at a mom and pop processor with four people working there as there is at an Oscar Mayer Wiener factory. And uh, we need not scale prejudicial regulations, but scale appropriate regulations so that these farmers, you, know, you can help them on the back end try to fight the oligopoly of four processors, and I appreciate you doing that, but we need to figure out how the, we can have little processors as well to help the little farmers. With that, my, my time has expired, and uh, I really, oh, oh, I see Ms. Bath is here, and I recognize her for five minutes. Thank you so much. I just kind of popped in on you, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate hey, you coming, though. <laughs> Thank you, A.G. Cantor. Thank you so much for appearing for us um, before us today. I'm so sorry I've been running in between committee hearings today. And uh, just, but thank you for all of your work uh, to keep our industries competitive and fair. Uh, America has prospered because of competition. And whether they aspire to grow into a large company or to remain in their communities, small to medium-sized businesses have benefited from the antitrust division's hard work and President Biden's economic plan. As I mentioned at FTC oversight hearing with Chair Khan, we absolutely must uphold and enforce antitrust laws to promote competition across our industries. That means doing our homework. Following the cases regarding these massive mergers and listening to those most impacted by these dealings and the work the division does is how we protect American dollars. AAG Cantor, I want to take a moment to applaud the division's efforts in identifying and also challenging anti-competitive deals and collusion. Your work helps to protect our markets and ensure that they remain fair and competitive. I understand that the antitrust division needs more staff to continue this fight and the good fight to protect our markets and also to protect our consumers and our workers. As Congress looks for ways, and we always need to be looking for ways to fund the budget, I hope my colleagues become better aware of your critical work and take the step to fund your division. I think that's very critical that we look towards doing that so that we can protect our fair and competitive market. AAG Cantor, I'm a huge supporter of fair market competition and find that it's necessary for our industries to prosper. As major companies begin their mergers and their acquisition pursuits, what considerations does the division use to determine if the acquisition would be harmful? Thank you for your question, um, and I appreciate very much the sentiment. Um, the American dream depends on uh, access to markets. The American dream depends on upward mobility for workers, and the American dream depends on the opportunity of anybody in the country with a great idea to build a business, whether it's in an urban community or a rural community. Uh, and we fight day in and day out to preserve that opportunity uh, by enforcing the antitrust laws. Um, the considerations that go into bringing a merger are first and foremost rooted in law. Uh, the uh, con you, Congress passed the Clayton Act. We enforce the Clayton Act. It's been interpreted for over a century by courts, uh, and we are um, uh, very much adherent to those court precedents, and we follow the law uh, and the facts wherever it takes us. At the same time, um, uh, sometimes facts change. Sometimes market realities change and evolve, and that's a wonderful thing, but we have to make sure that we keep pace that is why we're in the process of updating our merger guidelines to make sure that we can reflect and stay consistent with the applicable legal precedent, but also understand that the world as it exists today is different than it existed 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, and as market realities change, the tools that we use to understand those market realities need to evolve as well. Thank you for that. And as these mergers continue to take place, which we know that they will, what considerations are made by the antitrust division to determine if suppliers, small businesses, and local service providers are actually protected? So one of the most important things that we um, have done but need to do is to make sure that we're having a conversation with those who are most impacted by concentration and consolidation. And so we've um, taken an effort to not just um, make sure that we are enforcing the law effectively, but to have a conversation to change the language of antitrust so that we can engage with those communities who are most affected because they understand better than anyone 
uh, what the effect of a trans transaction might be, whether it's a small business looking to survive, whether it's a consumer um, looking to uh, get a lower price, uh, or a new entrant looking to start a new business and thrive. And so uh, we are working um, diligently and vigorously to make sure that we are changing the language of antitrust in our process so that it is more accessible and more open uh, to the public. As we always say, you know, just go to the source, correct? Correct. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you so much, Chairman. Uh, thank you for your testimony today, AAG Cantor, and I yield my the balance of my time. Thank you, Ms. McBath. She, uh, generally, it yields back. That concludes today's hearing. We thank the witness for appearing for the committee today. I thank you for making yourself available to us between hearings as well. And without objection, all members will have five legislative days to submit additional written questions for the witness or additional materials for the record. Without objection, the hearing is adjourned.